What is up everyone, my name is Jasper and in today's video I wanted to go over what plugins I use for my website. Now plugins are an integral part of any website and they are really important, but having too many plugins is not a good thing. Plugins are notorious for slowing down your site and they open up a gateway for you to get hacked in the worst case scenario. So plugins that aren't often updated anymore or are made by uh, small parties, they are very prone to being hacked. So I always just like to keep the plugins to a minimum. And usually you don't even need that many anyway. So I always have a standard of three plugins on my site and I don't really need any more. Unless you plan on doing some really custom things or some really cool things in the back end, you might need more. But in general, just a few, a handful of plugins is more than enough. So let's just go over the plugins that I use. And the first one is really simple SSL. Now this is one that I only use if I don't have an SSL certificate with my web hosting. Currently WPX does have these, but my Dutch websites, they didn't with their host. So what you do is you download this plugin and your website is SSL secured. The main reason for this plugin is to just have your website be secured. This saves very positive things in Google eyes and it will help your website rank much better. But as I said, some web hosts, they do already offer a free SSL certificate. In that case, you wouldn't need this plugin. If you don't have this certificate, it's really beneficial to just download this one. It's very easy to use and your website will be secure. Next up is another really important one. And this one is on all of my websites and it's ShortPixel. Now ShortPixel is a plugin that compresses your images and optimizes them. Now images, just like plugins, are notorious for slowing down a website. Images can be really big and ShortPixel helps that. They kind of compress all of your images to be the optimal uh, size, but also to still be very sharp and clear. I always have this on any of my websites and I do this just to ensure that my articles are not slowed down by their images. ShortPixel is one I use for all of my websites and I would highly recommend you use it as well. I know there are other ways to kind of compress your images or to optimize them. I just like the simplicity of ShortPixel. You just need to install the plugin and that's it. It's really just that simple. So just quickly about ShortPixel. ShortPixel is uh, both free and paid. So they do have a pricing plan, but you'll also get a certain amount of free credits every month. So if we go to their price for their image optimizer, you can see you got monthly and one-time payments. Now for $4 a month, you'll get 7,000 images per month, plus a bonus of 3,500. So that's uh, monthly. If you go to one-time plans, you can buy a lot of credits. So for 20 uh, bucks, you get 30,000 images. So overall, it is pretty uh, cheap. It isn't the cheapest. So if you still want to do this in, say, Photoshop or whatever, you can still do that. But for $10, uh, you get 10,000 images. There's just a lot of pricings. You can just kind of uh, check which one fits you the best. I personally think that these... Uh, Monthly plans are very, very cheap, $4 a month for 7,000 or basically for 10,500 images is pretty good. Here you can see the free version is what most uh, smaller websites will be perfectly fine with is 100 images per month plus a bonus of 50. So you get 150 images per month. The next up is another plugin I use a lot and that's Link Whisper. Now Link Whisper is a plugin I kind of install when the site is bigger but it's such a helpful plugin. I installed this one on my main beauty site, which had over 400 articles. And I believe at the time of uh, installing the plugin, it only had about 200 internal links. So that's not a lot. But with Link Whisper, you can really easily just interlink within your website. And in, I believe a week or so, I just went through all the articles with Link Whisper and I created about four to 500 internal links. Now this really just helps create a sort of spider web in your content. So some, someone that lands on a certain article has several options within the article to go to the next one. It's just really helpful and Link Whisper makes it so easy. Now this is a paid plugin and I do have an affiliate link down below, but it's a really, really helpful tool for any of the uh, medium to large websites. I wouldn't really recommend it to smaller websites because if you only have 50 articles, you could just take a week out of your uh, month and just go through them manually. But when you have hundreds of articles on there, Link Whisper just makes it so much easier. Now, last up, I also always have Updraft Plus, and this is basically for the backups. Now, Updraft, they make a backup into your Google Drive, so it's very accessible, but uh, it's just a really easy plugin. I do have the free version, so I need to manually do the backups, but, but it's just really there for the event if something goes wrong. Because trust me, if you have a website with hundreds of articles on there, no backups and something goes wrong and your site goes down or you lose your site, 
you're in for a really, really bad time. Backups are so important and I chose to use Updraft Plus. I'm sure there are other or maybe even better alternatives. I use Updraft Plus. Now that's really it for plugins for my smaller sites or my simpler sites. They really don't need that many. I use the Alcabalic theme, so I don't really need a SEO plugin. And aside from that, I just compress my images and I interlink and I make sure there's backups and I make sure that there's an SSL certificate. And from there, I'm basically good to go. But that's it for the smaller and simpler websites. My main beauty site has a few more plugins and I want to cover those now. Now for my main beauty site, I do have a few more plugins. Now let's just go over those. And the first one is a very important one and that's the plugin that your ad company requires you to install. So currently I'm partnered with AdThrive and they require you to download their plugin so they can manage their ads from the back end. Now this is a plugin that's of course a necessity if you want to run your ads. I'm pretty sure Mediavine has the same, at least it did when I was with Mediavine. And Zoic has an option, although they don't really advertise it. I'm pretty sure they almost roast you if you go that way because they want you through their name servers. But most ad networks, they do require you to download some sort of plugin. Now my main English beauty site had a pretty difficult time with the core update and when that happened I kind of looked back at my content and saw that some of it could use some improvement. And in fact they could use such large improvements that Google would basically see it as a new article. So what I decided to do is to write an actually new article. Uh, what I did then is I redirected those older articles to the newer ones and for that I also installed a plugin called Redirection. Now this one is basically just there for my rewriting journey. Um, it's probably not necessary for most people and I'm pretty sure there's even other ways that you can redirect your articles. For me, it was just very simple to use this plugin. It just was a very easy process and it made everything for myself a lot more doable. Now, and lastly on the side, I also have a context form plugin and I don't currently use it anymore. Uh, I used to think that the context form was a very important part, but 99% of it that you get is just plain old spam. You get lots of these threatening messages that they're going to take down your site if you don't pay them Bitcoin. Lots of advertisers just going with their SEO service, whatever. Most of it is spam, but I do have to say that I did get some very, very nice messages as well. Some people were really happy with the content and someone even offered to write for me. So I had him on board for a few months he was willing to write for free because he just enjoyed the content. Of course, I gave him some compensation, but you do have these people in there in your contact form, but they're just very rare. I also got contacted by two very large YouTubers in his niche, so it does have its merits, but currently I don't really want to deal with those thousands of spam messages anymore, especially if you're going to build a portfolio of websites. Just all the spam I got from one pretty large website. Just imagine that for 10 websites. I don't want to deal with that. So the context form plugin is not going to be around for all of the other websites. I'll just leave it on this one. Other than that, you can also install some caching plugins or any other plugin that you might need. There are some plugins for nice tables and graphs or whatever. I don't currently use those, but if there's need for any of them, I will definitely install them. There's also very handy plugins for Amazon affiliate links to just basically transfer all of them into your own code, your own links, so you get the referral commissions. There are so many handy plugins, but for me personally, I don't want that many. It's basically the less you have, the less plugins will slow down your site, the less chance there is that some plugin is compromised and that some uh, hackers will get into your website. It's just easier for me to use as little plugins as possible. But that was basically it. I really do hope you learned something from this video. I realize my approach to plugins is probably a lot different from others, uh, but I'm happy this way. It makes my life a lot easier just to limit the number of plugins. But that is it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.